I looked out today and it quit raining and seemed to be quite warm so I decided to test some of my recent changes. So I was going to check, test the long range telemetry, test the changes to the honey badger, the vibration dampening, the FPV camera mounting, the vibration dampening on the flame wheel, etc. So I went out and set up, put the long range telemetry transceiver on the back of the notebook computer and tried to connect to either platform. No go. It would not connect to the honey badger. It would not connect to the flame wheel. And the honey badgers had the long range transceiver on it for days working. So I tried for a few minutes to configure the telemetry radio. It just would not work with the notebook computer. This is my first attempt. So I went downstairs and got one of the 3DR 100 milliwatt Dropped the USB off the long range, stuck the 100 milliwatt transceiver in the slot. And it hooked right up to the Honey Badger. It had worked before. No reason for it not to work. So we'll just take the honey badger for a little flight, see how the FPV camera, FPV transmitter, voltage regulator, all that's going to affect flight time, balance, etc. Up we go. Little windy. No big deal. It was a nice flight.
Well, there goes my alarm. 20 seconds till 5 minutes is up. And 10 seconds until 5 minutes mark. So, we just calmly bring it in. It's been in stabilized mode. I was working on mid throttle settings, so it's been in stabilized mode for most of this flight. We'll just bring it over here and set her down. Call it a good flight. Not sure why I got back in. I only used 1500 milliamp hours out of 2800 milliamp hours. The platform seems to fly longer for some reason. I don't have to research that a little deeper. But right now I was just wanting to see how it reacted with the extra weight on it vibration was with the changes to the vibration foam underneath the autopilot. Were there any interference with the 5.8, etc. Just first test flight, make sure it's airworthy. So then I tried to hook to the flame wheel. Right now I'm resetting the transmitter from honey badger perimeters on the RC transmitter to flame wheel perimeters on the RC transmitter. Power up the flame wheel. Autopilot says it passed its self test. And this is basically where several problems started occurring. Waiting for the flashing. I armed it there. Went to the uh, computer to collect connect the telemetry it would not connect even with the old 3VR 100 milliwatt transceiver on the notebook computer it would not connect to the transceiver long range transceiver on the flame wheel which was the first test for the long range transceiver on the platform itself just would not connect really didn't want to fly without telemetry I like to be able to look at everything that's gone on inside the platform when it comes back if I have to Frequently, telemetry is just saved, stored, not used very much when things go well. When things go wrong, telemetry tells the story, tells me exactly what is wrong, exactly how to fix the autopilot, platform, etc. Whether it was an ESC that went out, motor, you can tell all of that from telemetry data. Plus, if it does something stupid and goes flying off and lands in a tree a quarter mile away, with telemetry coming back from the GPS, I know exactly where it's at but it just would not connect so I gave up on the connect tried to arm it with the transmitter there's a safety arm on the Pixhawk you have to push a button on the platform 
for a safety arm. If you try to arm on the RC transmitter by holding the throttle down and to the right and it has not been safety armed on the platform, you'll just get a message, pre-arm failure. But I had already pre-armed the platform with the safety button on the platform but every time I moved the throttle down and to the right it would not arm. Kept complaining about the GPS compass so I looked and sure enough I don't have a GPS lock at all. So I started playing with what can I do to help the GPS lock up? Checking wiring all looked good to me from what I could see. But it just would not arm. So I picked it up, carried it further out into the yard so it could see the sky better just in case the house was blocking a couple of satellites or something. Pretty much at this point I was like, hmm. I am not going to fly when the GPS won't hook up. There is something wrong someplace. Not exactly sure where. I use the autopilot for telemetry constantly and also for backup. Also, you, in case something happens to the platform or to me, I can flip it into return to launch. I can tell it to lawyer right there. It also fail safes automatically at a certain battery voltage and protects my batteries and does an automatic return to launch. So the autopilot system is basically my buddy box. And without it working, I was not going to fly. So I did not fly the flame wheel at all. Near the end of the flight, I uh, set up so I could uh, set my perimeter for mid-throttle. So let's see how that went, what we need to do there. Here we are, we're looking at throttle out and it was during the last time period that's what all these are here so I'm going to go in and we see there's a 623, 625 this is where I had to boost it a little bit 658 throttle position 627, 626, 625 so I'm going to go in and actually set a 625 on that perimeter so that uh, When I leave any kind of barometer hold, altitude type hold, I don't go zooming up or falling down. So I think I'm going to try 625 for the next flight. Let's look real quick at how that's set. So we'll come into our configuration, full perimeters list. We'll run down to our throttle. Where we set that perimeter, which would be here. So we were going to set this at 625. We'll write that to the platform. And we'll save it to the 
I actually have my Toshiba I'll save it to the honey badger parameter list oops let's try it again save yes I want to replace it honey badger frame there we go so now next time I'm out I'll set the throttle at 50% and go into altitude hold and then go back into stabilize mode and hopefully with this set to 625 it'll pretty much neither rise quickly nor fall quickly that's what this perimeter is for that was easy wasn't it also on the honey badger we had uh, just change the vibration dampening on the um, from those ugly white pieces of junk, the Dubro foam, to the darker. Let's see what that did. See if I'm still where I should be. So our X and Y is supposed to be plus or minus three. Looks like it's dampening properly on the X and Y. One, two, three. Actually, that is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, isn't it? So, 2, 4, 3 right in here. Eh. It's right on the borderline, but workable. So, let's see. Also, this one should be inside minus 15, 2, 4, 15 would be here. Did rotate kind of quick at one point, and minus 5, 2, 4, 5. So the vibration dampening on the new foam seems to be good also. So. I think the honey badger's flight worthy and ready for further testing. When I got back to the bench, I found that the connector on the telemetry was shipped with the APM connector with only five pins instead of the Pixhawk with six pins, so I exchanged out. This is the old connector I took off that only had the five pins in it. Also, I put a little tie wrap, kind of a strain relief inside the box for the wire. This was the wire going to the GPS. Somehow it had gotten chafed. Not sure how. Uh, so I put a little shrink wrap on all the chafings, put the pins back in the connector, put a big piece of shrink wrap around all of them, put the pins back in the connector, but that did not get the GPS working. So to summarize, the honey badger basically worked great. Somehow it seems to fly longer with a little more weight on it from the FPV camera and video transmitter. Uh, I'll look into that later. Uh, that can't be. It's just what it seems today. 
the long range telemetry radio on the back of the notebook computer I opened up took apart took the actual module out and reconfigured it and got it working fine with both platforms actually to get it working with the flame wheel platform as I said earlier in the, th the video I had to actually put the Pixhawk cable on the long range for the platform, the flame wheel. It comes shipped with the 5 pin cable for the 3DR APM 2.6 autopilot. The 6 pin cable for the 3DR Pixhawk autopilot came in a separate little uh, bag. I didn't notice it when I put it in the first time. So I switched that out, configured that radio transceiver actually and configured the transceiver on the back of the notebook computer and now the long range works with both the honey badger and the flame wheel from the long range module affixed to the back of the notebook computer. I'll move that over to the antenna tower that I use for my FPV antenna soon when I begin testing the FPV portion of the changes to the flame wheel and the honey badger. What else? Uh, GPS is still a problem for some reason. I think it's more in the cable. I'm going to replace out the whole shebang. The GPS, magnetometer, and the cable to both and see what happens there. Other than that, uh, overall it was a good day. Some things didn't go well. Some things went great. That's the way it is on a daily basis with this stuff. I was quite pleased with the honey badger. I could have taken the flame wheel, connected it to the computer, and gone in and changed the perimeter that says ignore all errors when you try to arm. And I could have armed it and flown it in stabilized mode and checked my vibration dampening on the camera, which was my intention, one of my intentions. But that does not give me the buddy box type backup of the autopilot. And if I'm going to pay six or eight hundred dollars for an autopilot to be my buddy box in the sky, so to speak, to protect me f when I have problems, can just flip return to launch. If I go out of uh, range of the RC signal, it automatically comes home. The battery gets down to whatever voltage I tell it I want for a cutoff. It automatically comes home and land. I am not going to fly without that backing me up. So as I could not get the GPS working on the flame wheel to my satisfaction, I boarded completely flying the flame wheel at all, which I always do. All my platforms have full autopilots on them. And it is there as a backup for my failures. Now, if a motor or an ESC goes out, sure, there it's going to crash. Nothing you can do but watch. But as long as everything's working properly, it is there as a backup for my failures. I can throw it in loiter mode, and it will stay right there. The GPS will hold it. At that GPS mark, the barometer will hold it at that altitude while whatever's going on with me, if I'm dizzy, trying to pass out, whatever, passes. If I feel like 
I have some kind of other problem, I'll just flip the return to launch button and it will come home, land, and uh, disarm itself. So if I was going to like start to have a heart attack, I would just fl flip the return to launch button. And I could go ahead and have a heart attack and die. wouldn't make any difference. The platform would come home, land, and disarm itself without any damage to property or personnel. Uh, so I just really will not fly without my autopilots ready to keep me, those around me, and the property around me safe. So that's, that's what happened with the flame wheel today. I did fix the long range telemetry problems, but I did not fix the GPS problems. It will have to wait another day or so before I will be ready to test the vibration dampening underneath the Mobius camera. And once I've done that, then I will start testing the FPV transmitters after I've got my jello out of my flights. So that's basically it for today. Thank you all for watching. Have a good one.